What's funny about that part-time savage thing in there, man, where I can totally dog myself because the truth. Um, all this became nice. Waking up, motherfucker. Yes. Bacon and eggs, motherfucker. <laughs> protein shake, early morning sh And I stopped having those hard conversations with myself. Boy, my whole life. That's why my friends hate my ass, boy. Because I'm hard on me. If I'm hard on me, I don't give a fuck about you. I don't give a fuck about what you think. I don't give a fuck what you think about me, nothing else. Hard on myself, bro. Every morning I woke up, all right, motherfucker. I call it my morning meeting. My morning meeting. We all have these fucking meetings all fucking day long. You know, we go to work. We're, we're working for somebody else. They want a meeting because they want to be successful. So we all sit our ass down, try to make them better, try to make them more money, try to make them more powerful. We don't do that for ourselves. So every morning I wake up, I used to. I, I, I had to get back into it again because in that chapter, you see, I got a little. That morning meeting, I wake up, okay, God, what did you do up yesterday? Where were you at? And I just go through and analyze my life. And then I went through a period of time there, man, where I stopped having those conversations. You know how you, let's say you and your wife go out, and let's say, I, I, don't, I don't know, let's make up a story here. You and your wife go out, and you see your cousin, and your cousin's fat as fuck. I don't know, I don't know if they are not, hopefully not. If they are, apologize, maybe. <laughs> so they go out, and you see your cousin, she's fat as fuck, he's fat as fuck, whoever. And you guys get back in the car, and you guys, man, see motherfucking Mary Jo? how fat she was that's what we do we go back and the hard conversation that you should be having with Mary Jo hey Mary Jo you gained some weight huh sister kind of big that's what I do to myself a lot of people that we see all day long we see them we don't have the hard conversation we, we walk around I'd rather you fucking hate me and get better than like me and stay the same and that's how I feel about David Goggins motherfucker I'd rather me hate oh, I hate you David man. I hate you David but I get better from it. I get better from it. And that's why when people see me and I know you, you're you're in my little foxhole. If you're in my foxhole and you become a piece of shit, hey, come here, brother. Let me talk to you real quick, brother. People don't like that shit, man, but I'm not gonna allow you to go to a place that's gonna be hard to get out of. It's gonna be hard. If I allow you to gain five more pounds, or allow you to take four more days off of school, or allow you to keep on procrastinating in your fucking life and I see it and I tell Jennifer behind your back I'm doing you no fucking justice zero justice so where this world is now you can't say a motherfucking thing I do I still do and I always will don't like me don't like me I'm good with that that's exactly what's going on with like fat moms that's it I'm People proud are like you're beautiful no matter what but that's not true and the thing about it is, I have no problem if you want to be fat. I have no problem with anybody. If you want to be whatever the f you want to be. But make sure you, f if you're fat, my f go, go be fat. Go be real f fat. But let's be real, nobody wants to be fat. Nobody does. That's why I said it, man. Nobody yeah, does. It's not true. They will pretend I'm fine with it. But if I could give you a button that you could push and boink. Be skinny. All of a sudden, you'd have this incredible body. Yep. You'd take Everybody would push that button. But what happens is, man, we get in this world where it gets hard. Yeah. And so the harder it is, the more you start to push back. And the more you push back, and it's not right for people to talk about. It's not right for, like, let's say you are fat. I was fat. That's why I talk about it. Go ahead and say something, motherfucker. I was fat, too. And it was hard as fuck every fucking day to get up. I know what it feels like when you roll your fat ass out of bed and all you want is some fucking damn cinnamon buns and shit. If can chuck and chuck and milkshake. I, I know what it is. I know exactly what it is. But I can't want it more than you. And so many people just want it the easy way. It, I'm sorry, man. It's not. So what they start to do is they build this narrative of it's okay. When the narrative should be, you need to fucking work harder. You need to fucking discipline your mind better. We need to help people more than just saying it's okay. It's okay that you're not willing to fucking help yourself out. That's not okay. It's not okay. It's not acceptable. Even though it's your life, if that's, if, if that's acceptable, that's unacceptable. And there's a lot of people in this world, me included, that if I accepted that, I wouldn't be anywhere. So yeah, it's, a lot of people just fucking, they, they start creating a narrative about themselves that make it okay. 
the ultimate get out of jail free card. And now the world is set up to have so many get out of jail free cards. Everything is okay. And you can't say a motherfucking thing about it. You cannot let go the past. Only a fool will let go the past. When you say let go, what you're trying to do is to change it. You cannot change it. Or should I come to terms with it? There's nothing to come to terms with. It just doesn't exist except in your memory. You must treasure your past. Pleasant, unpleasant, nasty, horrible, beautiful, everything is there in the bag. They're not living things, they're only memories, right? You must know how to use them to make yourself into a much bigger human being than what you are right now with all these experiences. Instead of that, you try to hurt yourself with it. This is the choice you have. Whenever something that we don't want happen to us, we can either become wounded or wise. Every memory, pleasant and unple unpleasant memories of life can be used to your advantage. If lot of unnecessary, unpleasant things happen, you should become wiser sooner than everybody else. You have to hit rock bottom, that's the way up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, rock bottom is beautiful. The struggle of... the struggle of coming back is beautiful, that struggle. I, you know, it's hard, it, it doesn't appear like it's beautiful mm -hmm. while you're going through it, but it's just being... it's just being tested. And without a test, there's no testimony. Life tests you, sometimes life annihilates you, but it's only up to you if you want to take some more. It's going to dish it out, but eventually if you don't quit, it'll be uh, merciful to you. Do the best you can. If that's not your philosophy, I would ask you to amend it. Let me give you the best of ancient script. Here's what it says. Whatever your hands find to do, do it with all your might, do it with all your strength, and do it with all your power. What a good philosophy. That kind of philosophy will revolutionize your life if you haven't picked it up lately. I'm not sure exactly why humans are this way. We don't respect anything that's given to us easily. Even at the most basic level, even something as simple as words, you have to sit there and think about it to really truly put respect on it. That's how we are. The biggest advice I can give you right now, the biggest advice that anybody can give you, 85 to 90 percent of life is just showing up show up if you show up there's a chance something could happen life isn't forever it finally comes to an end at the longest life is brief the sunrise doesn't last all day the sunset doesn't last all night when those pieces of time comes what you've got to do is get up a little earlier stay up a little later don't waste the opportunity to talk to someone don't waste the opportunity to have a meeting don't waste the chance. Don't let them all pass. This is the time to massively increase your numbers. Take advantage. Don't be so hard on yourself. It does not bode well. You are a magical, powerful, spiritual being who came here to incarnate into a physical, material body to have, what are the three things? Direction, dignity, and purpose. And if you dwell and think about what those three things are in your life, that'll keep you busy for a while. That's the kind of time that you spend with yourself that's really important because the end result of that will give you a much clearer picture of who you are and what you believe and that empowers you and strengthens you. And when somebody says anything negative about you or you hear something, water off your duck's back. That's their issue. It's not your issue. Having a healthy and mature attitude about the past can make a major difference in anyone's life. One of the best ways to approach the past is to use it as a school, not as a weapon. We must not beat ourselves to death with past mistakes, faults, failures, and losses. The events of the past, both good and bad, are all part of the life experience. For some, the past may have been a harsh teacher, but we must remember to let the past educate us and bring the value of its experience into our lives. It is easy to allow the past to overwhelm us, but the good news is that it is also easy to allow the past to instruct us and to increase our value. Part of the miracle of our future lies in the past. Past lessons, past errors, 
past successes. The collective experiences of all that has happened to us can either be our master or our servant. That is why it is so important to gather up the lessons of the past and invest them in the future. If we can establish that kind of intelligent approach to the past, we can dramatically change the course of the next 12 months. Each of us will be somewhere in the next 12 months. The question we must ask ourselves is where? Developing a new philosophy about the past is the key to changing our current attitude. Until we have finally accepted the fact that there is nothing we can do to change the past, our feelings of regret, remorse, and bitterness will prevent us from designing a better future with the opportunity that is before us today. How effectively we use the present is largely determined by our attitude about the past. Until we amend our philosophy, we cannot repair our attitude. And if we cannot repair our attitude, our future is going to be filled with the same sense of regret, remorse, and bitterness that currently has us by the throat. We cannot move forward into a brighter future until we have closed the door on the darkness of the past. The current moment is where our better future begins. The past gave us a wealth of memories and experiences, and the present gives us a chance to use them wisely. The present brings us an opportunity to create an exciting future. But the promise of the future demands that we pay a price in the present. The opportunity of the current moment must be embraced, or the rewards of the future will be withheld. Our goals and ambitions of the past are bringing us present rewards. If our current rewards are small, then our past efforts were small. And if today's effort is small, the future reward will be small as well. Today brings to each of us 1,440 minutes, 86,400 ticks of the clock. Both the poor and the wealthy have the same 24 hours of opportunity. Time favors no one. Today merely says, here I am. What are you going to do with me? How well we use each day is largely a function of attitude. With the right attitude, we can seize this day and make it a point of new beginning. Today does not care about yesterday's failures or tomorrow's regrets. It merely offers the same precious gift, another 24 hours, and hopes that we will use it wisely. The greatest opportunity today brings is the opportunity to begin the process of change. Today, the present, is the moment when we can inaugurate our new voice coming into power. It can be a new change of mind, a new attitude adopted about who we are, what we are, what we want, and what we are going to do. Today can also be exactly like yesterday and the day before, and the day before. It is all a question of attitude. Our attitude about the future is also of great importance. In their classic Lessons of History, Will and Ariel Durant wrote, to endure what is, we must remember what was and dream of things as they will one day be. Our attitude about the future depends on our ability to see the future. Each of us has the inherent ability to dream, design, and experience the future through the power of an imaginative inner eye. Whatever the mind has the capacity to imagine, it also has the ability to create. Just as the body instinctively knows how to perform the miracle of health, the mind instinctively knows how to perform the miracle of wealth.